All right. Cheers, everyone. I am Amy Mitchell with Houses of Windsor, and this is Virtual Tea Time with Amy. And today my special guest is Elizabeth Gifford Maffei. And thank you for being on, Elizabeth. Oh, my pleasure. I'm excited. Yeah, this will be fun. Um, so before we get too far into it, I always ask, what are you drinking and where are you calling from, like city and state? Oh, okay, well, I am drinking um, your very famous, delicious, wonderful strawberry green tea. Ooh, nice. And, I and must, what do you think of it? Well, I must show you my teacup. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's beautiful. It is from Russia. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, that's awesome. It is. The tea is amazing. And I have some other goodies to show you later. Oh, okay, cool. Um, but I am calling from the Orlando, Florida area. All right, cool. And I am drinking, I actually haven't even posted this, but today is National Chai Day. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm drinking vanilla chai <laughs> and I'm uh, calling from the Orlando area as well, uh, Altamont Springs specifically. So cheers. Yeah, yeah so cheers. <laughs> and okay, so Elizabeth, and I met through, I put, I put in the comments or the caption that we met through in the virtual world of networking. <laughs> we've, we've never seen each other in person. Not yet, but seen, not yet. Yeah, but we've seen each other a lot <laughs> this way, <laughs> which has been nice. Um, so I wanted to ask first, I'll have you kind of share what it is that you do and you can kind of decide which route <laughs> you want to go with it but i'm probably going to ask you a lot of questions about your psychic stuff <laughs> oh please okay <laughs> okay <laughs> well thank you i appreciate it and um and i do i have some little tea things to share with you at some oh, cool. point as well yeah sure sure i mean that'd be great uh i the name of my company is be empowerful you i started it many years ago because i went through a major life change and really became empowered within myself to really move forward in my life in in relationships and business and all of that and i really felt called to work specifically with women but i work with men as well mm -hmm. and um gosh there are a lot of things that i do uh, i work with the spiritual world i work and help people shift their mindset Mm -hmm. I help them with their physical bodies, although that's not my my main focus, but body and then, of course, their business. So I call myself a quantum shift coach. Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. It's all encompassing, right? Because right. It's, we're not just our businesses or even even if she, even if it's career, it may not be mm -hmm. your own business, but being able to move forward and really living your most joyful life in all of those areas. So I love supporting people that way. Uh, I'm a, a medium. I'm a numerologist. Uh, I'm an angelic healing practitioner, frequency healing practitioner, mm -hmm. lots of juicy things kind of yes. melded into that. And I love the down to earth step by step process and the detail and so I'm, I'm, you know, I, I pray always that I'm able to hold a good balance for anyone who needs to be uplifted because they only may need just a little part of that support. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit about that, me. That's awesome. Yeah, I've got I'll have lots of follow up questions for that, but I just remembered so you'll have to tell everyone what you used to do when people used to meet you in your office pre-COVID, the geo with the tea sets. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Well, and I actually have had some people come into the office. It, oh, okay. it all depends on um, their comfort level, right? Mm -hmm. I've been working on virtually for years and years, uh, but I did set up a beautiful room. It's called the blue room because oh, cool. the, the furniture is blue, the cabinet mm -hmm. is blue, but oh, it's nice. It's a very soothing, healing mixture of turquoise and darker blue, which really mm. has to do with the throat chakra, which is oh, yeah. your will, and mm -hmm. then your third eye, which has to do with receiving divine guidance. So they would come in. I have this, this little uh, cabinet, and they get to choose their teacup, and I choose mm -hmm. them. Or, uh, I uh, serve them organic teas and honey and all of that. So I wanted to show you yes. not... You know, we I have my Russian teacup here, 
but mm -hmm. I have to show you one of my English teacups. Oh, cool, please. And this is- Oh, I love that. Her name is Elizabethan. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and what I love about the, the English china is that when you tip it, look at that, the little rose is right there. So yeah, they have the inside. It. Yeah, that is really cute. And this one is called, let's see if I can see it, uh, Golden Rapture. Golden so, Rapture. Oh, wow. Nice. Who wouldn't like that, right? I so, know. I love that. That's really oh, pretty. But, you know, I've collected these teacups, I think, since I was a, a, a child, and mm -hmm. has, they have a lot of sentimental value. So when I was able to set up this office, I wanted to center it around the feeling that people got when they first walked in, comfort, like home, um, safety, security. And, and I really feel like it helps people to just relax and open up so we can really dig in and do the deep work. Right, right. That's really, neat. so I have a question for you. So they were all, they got to choose their teacup, right? And you have a bunch of different types of teacups. Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel like that based on the teacup that they picked that you knew a little something about them <laughs> by which one they were drawn to? Yes, actually. Um, uh, one of the favorites is this blue one. And okay. I actually switched them around. I have a couple of shelves and I kind of move mm -hmm. them around, but this one is a favorite. And that definitely tells me that those two things, um, mm -hmm. they are going to need some help uh, really standing in their willpower. And it doesn't mean willpower like you can stop yourself from eating a scone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Although that word does mean that, but right. um, meaning being able to express yourself and express your, your uh, true desires mm -hmm. and being able to be firm in that. But then also they're really, they're really desiring to, to open up to more of their tap into their intuitive abilities. Mm -hmm. So, and there I have others, they have beautiful little strawberries on them. And typically people who choose that are very connected with nature. Oh, okay. But they yeah. like to garden or grow mm -hmm. things or, um, so, so what a great question. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had to ask is when I was doing live events, I have a lot of, you know, mix and match teacups and, um, one in particular that I did for the British American Chamber of Commerce, I had all the cups set out on the table and everyone would come up and pick their cup. And I started noticing, I was like, this is really fun to watch to see who picks what. And what was great was that the chamber president, let's see, his, his wife came up first and he was nowhere around, so he didn't see. And she picked a cup and then walked away. And then he came over several minutes later and picked the exact same cup because I had like two or three of that kind and he picked the exact same cup and he had no way he hadn't seen his wife and I go oh my god that's the same one <laughs> that your wife picked out he's like well that's what I forget like 40 years of marriage will do to you <laughs> or something like that. that you know that is so true they say you know when you, the longer you're married or the longer you're together in a relationship sometimes you end up looking like each other yeah. right right but, but that is definitely good synergy they you know they and, and, you know, it could be design, it could be mm -hmm. color, it could be the shape of the cup. Right. Um, I don't read tea leaves, right? <laughs> right. I don't do that, although how cool, because I love researching this. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Uh, but I, I really think it's just the configuration of all of that. Like, you know, like this blue one ha definitely has sacred geometry in it. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it has, uh, you know, the elements of geometry and design and that that may draw someone or just the roses, the shape of the roses. May yeah. Mm -hmm. so, interesting. Well, well, then here you have to see if you can assess mine. So this is my favorite cup. I've had it forever. Um, and this is the so this is how I describe to people when um, oh, I say I like, you know, I say old lady British teacups, like flowers and gold trim. <laughs> That's what I want. So I guess there's no geometric shapes. I don't know if you can see it. Here we go. Well, it is. You're in a circular pattern and the oh, okay. circle, the circle designates, and you see I've got a circle here around a tree. Mm -hmm. The circle designates home and relationship as you know, circling back, right? Equality for all. Mm -hmm. But the colors in that, you know, those that deep rose color. Mm -hmm 
um, has to do with the heart chakra. So a lot of love and, and joy. And then the yellow has to do with mm -hmm. the solar plexus and that's confidence and courage. But you're right, the gold, mm -hmm. the gold <laughs> elegance right first class first grade <laughs> yeah good taste right am i right yeah yep <laughs> yeah that's perfect I love yeah because i have some people that um you know they're more into the uh asian styles of tea times and it's like you know i'm like yeah that's neat but like i want a pretty teacup <laughs> i don't want the, just a little cup without a handle and no gold <laughs> <laughs> did, did you ever force yourself, you wanted your teacup, and did you ever force yourself to take another one at one point? Did you ever choose oh, another one? That's a good point. I don't think so. Okay, yeah. so if you ever do that just yeah. for fun, you know, make, make the intent and make the decision, you know what, today I'm going to choose another one, and then check in how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. How do you feel when you choose that teacup? Do you feel like you're missing something? Do mm -hmm. you feel a flutter in your heart or do you feel kind of uneasy in your, in your stomach or what, like just kind of check yeah. just for fun. Just yeah. To yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. So yeah. I like how you say, yeah, you don't read tea leaves, but I guess like I say I, we read teacups, <laughs> not tea there leaves. We go. <laughs> there That's we go. great. That's so, um, okay. So the, uh, so you say you, you call yourself a medium, right? Instead of psychic, is there a difference? The, uh, actually there is, um, okay. there it's all energetic. Everything is energy, your energy. I am the flag behind you is energetic. Mm -hmm. All of the crystals and all the fun things I have, you know, everything, your desk is all energy mm -hmm. right? and we can sense it. We just may not always be aware. So um, have you ever had this experience where maybe you were thinking of someone and you haven't talked to them in a while and within the next week or so, all of a sudden they call you or they contact mm -hmm. you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's psychic energy. Oh, wow. And, and, and we all have this ability, right? So mm -hmm. we've had these experiences where those thoughts, of course, manifest and become things. But when you bring that to your forefront and you think about someone, you're actually sending them a signal, call me, call me, call oh, cool. me. You may not be thinking that. So that's psychic, mm -hmm. right? And for example, if, if I were to have a client and I did, I would do a psychic reading on them, I would be able to tell things about them in their current life mm -hmm. that maybe nobody else would know, mm -hmm. uh, but that's just, that's psychic. A medium, you cannot be a medium if you're not psychic, but you're, if you're a psychic, if you're psychic, it doesn't necessarily mean you're a medium. What is a medium? Okay. Well, it's not a small and it's not a large. <laughs> oh, sorry that's good. Joke. No, that's good joke. Okay. medium joke it's a medium joke <laughs> eh, medium <laughs> i like it <laughs> so again everything is energy so so those who have crossed over and or high energetic beings such as angels spirit guides um uh, you know, uh, gurus, right, the, who uh, may have lived or have not lived on this earth, either they have or they have not lived on this earth. Once they pass into the etheric world, or they're in the etheric world, their energy is very, very vibrates at a very high level. Mm -hmm. Right. And we as humans vibrate at a lower level. Now, well, right now we're going through an ascension process, especially this year, we're transitioning <laughs> from the three dimensional, which is everything you see is right in front of you to more of an understanding at a heart level, which is the fifth dimensional. However, what a medium has to do is have the psychic abilities to be able to open up the channel and connect with energy and raise his or her energy, mm -hmm. tap into the energy of the higher spirit and the higher spirit actually has to lower their energy a little bit so they meet in the middle okay medium yeah okay cool uh, did you ever have this experience where you walked into maybe either a party you didn't know everybody or maybe a networking event or whatever and there was just somebody in the room and you just felt drawn to connect with them mm-hmm yeah yeah that's that energetic you're on the same frequency same okay. vibration. By the same token, have you ever had an experience where you've been in a room 
and you've either tried to approach someone and they've moved away from you mm -hmm. or they've they've approached you and you were kind of like a little standoffish and you couldn't tell why yes yeah i've definitely had that yeah perfect it's because their energetic signature was not close enough to yours there was so much of a disparity okay. mm -hmm. right right that it felt uncomfortable for the both of you okay okay isn't that cool yeah. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, that's interesting because I definitely have had times where it's like, you know, you meet someone and you, like you said, you can't pinpoint it. It's like they seem nice enough. It's like they seem like they're interacting just like anybody else that you normally like, but there's something about them, you know, that I always say like they just rub you the wrong way <laughs> somehow. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's, yeah, our energies don't match. <laughs> <laughs> and I always inspire people. I, I say, you know, a good thing to do is when that does occur and it will continue to occur mm -hmm. um, when that does remember how I said about the teacup, try and, and, and choose a different teacup kind mm -hmm. of, a, it, you know, it's, you're not really in concert with that one. When you meet someone and it doesn't feel right, check in with your physical body and find ask yourself hmm where does it feel off to me more often than not it's in the heart space or in the gut right mm -hmm. and so many people will say oh i have this gut feeling or these red flags yep. went up and what do we do we ignore them half the time <laughs> yep <laughs> and then it doesn't always work right. out <laughs> right right, right. So mm -hmm. just trust just trust. yes Okay, so we should. Okay, so if it's a feeling in your gut, then you and like, you know, the red flag feelings, listen to that. What does it mean if it's more in your heart? That well, okay, so the heart, we, we actually have two brains. Right? Okay, we have this brain, and we have our heart brain. Mm -hmm. And our heart brain, our heart center is actually our first brain, the most important one. It's the one that we must use when we're manifesting something if you just mm -hmm. think about something it it's not always going to happen or work or appear the heart actually has a frequency of uh 528 hertz okay mm -hmm. and it's an amplifier so they've done scientific testing which kind of blows my mind that your heart energy can be detected up to 15 feet away oh wow isn't that amazing yeah that's so cool. our heart is much stronger than our brain so if you feel it in your heart this is where emotion lies mm -hmm. and uh when i do one of my lectures i always uh talk about um Einstein and how um, just before his death, he willed all of his work to his daughter. And there was part of his work that he said to her, wait for 20 years before you disclose this information because the world is, won't be ready for it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So she did 20 years later, it was um, uh, uh, E equals MC squared, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The formula for energy. And he said, I have discovered that it is E equals love mm -hmm. mc squared so he discovered the energy of love was at the center of everything oh wow and if you look at all of the major and i'm sure minor and unknown religions mm -hmm. right they all preach about love mm -hmm. this is this is the most intense feeling so if you feel something in your heart when you meet someone Mm -hmm. check in if it feels good or if it feels uncomfortable mm -hmm. and then then trust your in intuition and what to do from there okay okay very yeah. cool yeah and so how long have you been uh or i guess felt like you were a medium or a psychic like how long have you been doing it versus how long have you noticed <laughs> that you had this <laughs> Um, I mean, I've had experiences since I was a, a, a kid. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I remember playing by myself in my room and I couldn't have been more than, I don't know, maybe nine. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I may have had experiences before then. I haven't, you know, but, but this particular experience, I recall being on my knees on the floor, playing with something on the floor, door closed. And all of a sudden I felt surrounded like, 
with this, as if angels were rock, wrapping their arms around me and giving me a hug. And I mm -hmm. stopped for a minute and I, and I noticed this and I thought, oh, that's really nice. Thank you. Yes, God, I know you've always told me that I'm special and I'm supposed to do something special in this lifetime. And then I went about playing. I mean, it was not. <laughs> right? right. And, and, and I, I don't want anyone to take this the wrong way. I feel humility is really important. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, it, I feel that everyone is special. Mm -hmm. right? And I feel that we all have a, I know that we all have a divine purpose. It's just, I kind of recognize that at a really young age, I didn't know what I'd be doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was, that was something that I was able to, um, to sense and feel. Mm -hmm. um, and then through high school, I did all kinds of research papers on all kinds of spiritual things because I had a very open uh, history teacher so I could okay. write papers on anything <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, and I just loved all of that so so you know moving forward um when I had my first child my son who's special needs um I remember putting him to bed at night and just saying the you know the our father with him and our little prayers that we said and I'm just laying with him and all of a sudden these this language comes out of my mouth and I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And at the time I had heard it was called speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. well, now I know that it's, it, it, and it can be called that. It's also light language. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how long it was going to last. I just trusted that if God was sending it to me, it was like this incredible mm -hmm. special blessing over a child who really shouldn't have survived birth and he's now 36 years old oh wow mm -hmm. right? so just it, lots of experiences like that and mm -hmm. i think you know after taking care of my family and them all growing up is when i really delved into look this has always been a passion of mine how do i take it to the next level so it's mm -hmm. been many it's been many years mm -hmm. but not until later in life so there's there's always time to reinvent yourself. Right. So did you have any family members like that felt similar to you or did you talk about it with like siblings or parents or anybody? Um, I mean, I have siblings. I don't know that they, they particularly would approve. And yet I know that they've had experiences between the two of them where one sister was in trouble and mm -hmm. who lived thousands of miles away and then the other sister called her in a panic and said oh my god what's the matter uh, you know wow. so we all have those abilities and I laugh because my mom was she was amazing and she was the funniest thing she was um, hearing impaired her entire life mm -hmm. but she had eyes in the back of her head have you ever heard that expression yeah uh-huh <laughs> right. yep so <laughs> she knew things mm -hmm. that I, we never had this outright conversation, but she knew things. Mm -hmm. right? So okay. um, some families share it. Uh, some, and, and it's interesting because it's not only this family, but in, in my belief, although I am a Christian, mm -hmm. um, I have come to understand and know that there are many past lives as well. So mm -hmm. it could have been things that people were bringing in from past lives. Okay, okay. And so then I have to ask because, um, I mean, obviously I'm no expert in all of this, but I find it very interesting and I've watched, you know, different shows and things. So I have to ask, do you, or like, um, you know, people that practice what you do, do you have to be worried about like, bad like negative energies and stuff like is there yeah that's, that's a, no well that's a great question it's it's actually a double-edged sword and not in a not in a bad way okay um, they're actually kind of two answers so when you when you work on a plane of uh raising your vibration right and you and you learn how to open yourself up to receive information Mm -hmm. you don't know what you're doing and I help a lot of clients do that I help them with their spiritual connections but also how to do it in a way so that only 
positive energy and positive, you work with positive right. entities, right? Mm -hmm. There's no way that a negative entity could work with me because my light and other people's lights are so bright mm -hmm. that it's blinding to them. And they, they prefer to go to someone who has a lower vibration. So okay. that's why we should all raise our vibration. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two, I do, um, I've done, I run a course several times um, called Energy Vampires. Mm -hmm. we, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we may have all had that experience where we've been in a relationship, whether it's brief or a long period of time, someone who seems lovely and wonderful and charming and funny, you know, from the get go. And yet they're, they end up being extremely controlling and make yes. you feel terrible about yourself. Mm -hmm. And I actually have experienced it a couple of times in my life. And the last mm -hmm. time I experienced it, I was actually by this particular uh, energy vampire was made physically ill. I mean, I was physically oh, ill wow. for about two to three months mm -hmm. and just by sheer will was able to come out of that. Mm -hmm. But I teach people to recognize that behavior. There is mm -hmm. a, there are certain behaviors you can clearly see mm -hmm. because they make us feel like it's all our fault and mm -hmm. they, and it's very confusing, right? It is. Yeah. They're, they're literally pulling your energy out of you because they can't generate it for themselves. Mm -hmm. So long story short, there is, there is lower energy and there is higher energy, just like there's yin yang, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if we didn't have the dark, it, they, we, we would have nothing to contrast it with the light. So it's mm -hmm. part of, it's part of life and part of mm -hmm. growth. You just have to be able to recognize it and know how to work with it. Right. So, yeah, so my ex-best friend from middle school through college <laughs> was, was an energy vampire. <laughs> but um, so I guess so then my question would be uh, what what can be done for the energy vampires? Are, like, do they just need to match with someone that's more like them or do they need to like, you know, try to become like, I guess, more light? What would you say to someone <laughs> or do they just get to stay as is? <laughs> well, um, honestly, uh, a lot of energy vampires um, also have the quality and it could be temporary. Everybody mm -hmm. can grow. It's a choice, right? Mm -hmm. Free will. We all have been given free will and we can choose to live our lives in that dark space our entire lives if we want to. Um, but they often have the quality of not being able to be accountable for their behavior. Mm -hmm. They refuse yeah. to be accountable and they blame. And you, you, that's the first step. They'll be very kind until you don't do what they want you to do. Right. And then they'll turn it around and blame you. Mm -hmm. So when they're unable to be accountable for their own behavior, the only will they're using is the will to tap into somebody else, not tap into their own power. Mm -hmm. right? So the best thing you can do for anyone, mm -hmm. whether they're high vibrational, lower vibrational, whether they're ill, whether they've done you wrong, um, whether they've done you really wrong, whatever, yeah. or, and even for ourselves mm -hmm. is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have that conversation, that physical conversation, because right. that might put you more in jeopardy, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's about surrounding them in thought with love, mm -hmm. forgiveness, gratitude, and then learning how to let go. We actually create energetic cords. Mm -hmm. I can see them. A lot of people can see them. Mm -hmm. Some people can't. And you have to learn how to eliminate those cords or they'll just keep pulling the energy from you. Okay. So the best thing you can do for anyone who is struggling and suffering and does not want to heal mm -hmm. is remember love, mm -hmm. forgiveness, and gratitude. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. 
Yeah. So then, okay, now is this the numbers thing? Is that part of that or like a like is that part of being a medium or that's a separate thing because I yeah I'd love for you to explain it <laughs> because I don't know how to <laughs> the numbers thing that's funny yeah <laughs> makes me feel like we should go get a lottery ticket right <laughs> no 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 a winning lottery ticket right let's, right <laughs> let's put that let's put that thought out there yes <laughs> so you know like I said when I was a kid I I studied all kinds of things. I was fascinated about the galaxy and the planets and the stars and astrology and all kinds of stuff, right? Um, and one of the things that I, I came to learn about at a very young age was numerology. The And mm -hmm. it, all that is, is the study of numbers. Okay. Ology, anything is the mm -hmm. study of, right? Mm -hmm. Well, like everything, numbers have frequency and all you have to do is look up Nikola Tesla to find that out. Okay. So he, um, and also Einstein said the three most powerful numbers in the world are three, six, and nine. And yeah. I actually have the numbers, right? There's the number nine yeah. backwards. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> yep. I, have, I have them in my office. Um, no, each number has a frequency. And what I do is I see myself as a guide. Mm -hmm. I guide people on their life path. Um, I help them to be aware of what their destiny is, their purpose, um, pinnacles and challenges. What those are are different times during our life where it's like we climb a mountain, we have a certain purpose, we achieve it. And now all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I don't feel like that's a right fit anymore. Mm -hmm. And you're on to your next adventure, right? Mm -hmm. But everything is associated with a number. Your name is uh, has numbers in it. Your birth date has numbers in it. So, for example, I have my numerology cards here. Can I pull a card for us? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Please. <laughs> uh, okay. So there's so there's sacred geometry. You see. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, and so I'm just going to go ahead and clear this deck. Okay. Awesome. And this deck. I mean, I do readings as well. I do uh, angel. I do angel readings and I also uh, do an angelic healing process, which is one of my favorites because I get mm -hmm. to work with four archangels, but I'm, we're going to, we're going to pull a number and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle and mm -hmm. see how that one just popped out. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes they'll jump out. Sometimes they'll flip over. Sometimes oh, they'll okay. fall on the floor. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's my intention to pull one card and three will fall out. Oh, okay. That's funny. So, um, so this card, look at that. Hmm. Okay. So it has the number 61. Of course, that's backwards, right? Oh, no, but I can see it. Yeah. Oh, you can, can see it. Okay. The number 61. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the word is self love. Oh, okay. <laughs> and what have we been talking about? Yep. Mm -hmm. And what color are you wearing? <laughs> right. A lot of pink. <laughs> Yeah. So the heart chakra is actually green, but there are actually three chambers in the heart. So mm -hmm. in the heart chakra will contain green, pink, and blue. Mm -hmm. Green is love for others. Pink is self-love and blue is unconditional love for others and for the world and for yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So the number 61, what does that mean? The number six resonates with someone who is a caretaker, who loves to take care of others. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think about the both of us, yeah, can you see each of you and also myself, can you see us playing a role? Like we like to pamper people. You love to do tea parties. Right. You love to invite people in yeah. the relationship, mm -hmm. right? I do, yeah. That's the six. The number one has to do with our individuality. We must start with the number one. Okay. So you and I understand that if we take care of ourself mm -hmm. and nurture ourselves first, we're able to nurture others, which is the number six. Right. Then in numerology, you always um, uh, calculate numbers down to a single digit, except... Mm -hmm. If they're, if it's an 11, a 22 or a 33. Okay. 
Those are called master numbers. We can talk about angel numbers in a minute. Okay. So when you add the six and the one together, it mm -hmm. equals seven. Mm -hmm. And seven is the most spiritual number. It's, it's the number of reflection, spirituality, going within, being more of yourself than just this physical body, really mm -hmm. stepping into your soul purpose. Oh, wow. So your word for today is self-love. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> so angel numbers are, you know, have you ever been driving down the road and you might, for whatever reason, your eye is drawn just either in front of you or to the side and you see a license plate with a double digit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, or it could be a, a you know, a, a bulletin board or it could right. be, it could be your phone, your right. clock, 11, 11, mm -hmm. oh, right. one, you know, two, mm -hmm. two. Well, a lot, those double numbers are messages from our angels to get mm -hmm. our attention. Oh, okay. And each of those numbers means um, a different thing. Do I have a, do I have another minute to tell a quick story? Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 You have plenty of time. <laughs> okay, cool. So about a year and a half two about a year and a half ago, um, my husband got a new license plate on his truck and we were living in a different location and he comes home. He's oh, I got my new license plate. He put it on the truck. I went down just to spend some time with him. And I looked and I went, uh Oh, and he said, what? I said, you have the number 55 on your license plate. He's, he looks at me and he knows, he, he's, he knew I was going to have something to say. And I said, 55, that means change and we're going to be moving. Now, mm -hmm. I, I guarantee you, we had, you know, we hadn't done any financial work on this. Uh, we had wanted to move at some point down the road, but didn't feel like we were, we would be in a position because of the market. Um, and we didn't know. And I said, I said, we're going to move and there's going to be a drastic change. Hmm. Well, within three months, all of a sudden the market opened up and we were on the hunt. Everything laid in, in exact perfect alignment. Mm-hmm. And we put, I put an offer on a home and we moved that same year. Wow. And the interesting thing is that the numbers on our house, which are also significant, mm -hmm. added up to the number 11, which is a master number, which mm -hmm. means the most intuitive number. Mm -hmm. And about a week before we had kept looking at houses and they were all number five homes, which means change and adventure, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. But then one day I went about a week before we found our home, we went, I went shopping and on the receipt was the number seven eleven. Mm -hmm. I kept being shown all day long, the number 11, 11, 11, mm -hmm. 11. This house came on the market. We went to see it and it was a number 11 and we moved. Oh, wow. So numbers are really significant. Even, even the name of someone's business mm -hmm. comes down to a number that sends a frequency and a vibration to their particular clients. Oh, cool. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, long, long story long. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I love it. That's so interesting. Um, and so I think, so you said before we went live that you were working on uh, a report for someone. So what does it entail when you're like do a full workup for the numerology? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, <laughs> or, or roughly, I, what does it entail? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I calculate their, their birth name and their birth date, and then it's broken down into all different categories. And then they receive, um, a, a, it's actually a gorgeous online report that they can access anytime mm -hmm. and then they get an hour with me. But for example, um, their life path number, uh, and then I'll do their personal year. So we also mm -hmm. have personal years in a cycle of nine. Every okay. nine years, it resets. Mm -hmm. We also have personal month number. Oh. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a two year and a nine month, what does that mean? What mm -hmm. energies are being brought into your personal life 
and your business life. It could mean that this is a year for you to find a relationship or build collaboration and cooperation with others. But if it's mm -hmm. a nine month, things may be ending. Mm -hmm. A relationship or a collaboration may be ending because it makes room for the new, mm -hmm. right? Um, so they'll get the years, uh, the year they're in, um, entire year, um, entire year of months. Oh uh, gosh, what else? Their pinnacles, challenges, cycles, the essence, the mm -hmm. essence of who they are, uh, oh, cool. their birthday number, their destiny, their soul, what resonates with their soul, mm -hmm. maturity, current name number, and karmic debt. That's interesting because... Oh yeah, what's that? <laughs> or how do you well, figure that? <laughs> uh, if there are numbers that are, are not included in your, your uh, name, mm -hmm. then they are numbers that you're here on this earth to continue to grow in, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing. It's not karma's bad. It's mm -hmm. just you've come back into this lifetime because you didn't finish your soul growth in those areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And even if you have zero, and I happen to have zero karmic, uh, karmic debt, it doesn't mean you get off scot-free. <laughs> you, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. you still have to do the work, but sometimes it's in a lot of different categories, right? Mm -hmm. so, so they get a lot of that information, but it's helpful because, um, you know, I was working with someone who said, you know, I just, I, I love my husband uh, and, you know, but there's just, there's a part of me that just wants to go and travel and he doesn't like traveling. And I just, I need to just pick up and go and travel mm -hmm. from time to time. And she was in a situation where it wasn't as easy to do mm -hmm. that. Well, lo and behold, her chart was filled with fives. Oh and yeah. Number five is change and adventure. Uh, mm hmm Right. So, so I thought that was, um, that was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. so it it yeah. gives us insight, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I did my families just for fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I read through it, I went, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why they, they're, they, right. they are the way they are. And that was good because, you know, I wasn't, I, I wasn't trying to make up stories in my head and say, well, maybe it was me or maybe I'm right. not, you know, that's, that's just part of what they need to do in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And it's not up to us to live someone else's path. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. so I hope, okay. So I don't know if this is like, uh, a crazy question, or I, I hope it's related. <laughs> so since you mentioned um, like karmic debt and past lives and things. So in thinking in that way, do you believe um, that it's like, you know, basically that it's our consciousness like that keeps going, like that goes into the next person, like, and that's how we kind of remember things or what, <laughs> how does it work? How does it work? Hmm. I don't know if I have all the answers, but I'll try. Well, we have um, we have an individual soul. Uh, it, it's a blueprint, if you will. Mm -hmm. That, if you believe this, or you know, it, it, this is just what I'm sharing, right? Right. Yeah. That, that the Creator, the Divine, that God has made us an individual. Mm -hmm. There will never be anyone like us in that it hasn't been in the past and, and won't be in the future. And yet we have always been here since we have been created. Mm -hmm. So that's our individual soul, our blueprint. Mm -hmm. right? Does that make sense so far? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now you asked about consciousness. Mm -hmm. So there's something called the collective consciousness. Okay. And what that is, is every piece of data, every piece of information, every 
sac sacred geometry, every number, every and numbers, by the way, is the language. Numbers are, are the language of the universe, which mm -hmm. is why that fascinates me. Mm -hmm. But the collective consciousness is everything that ever was, ever is, and ever will be, all of the information. Mm -hmm. And we have the ability, if we learn how to tap into mm -hmm. the collective consciousness. So we are our own individual blueprint. Mm -hmm. And yet we are all one. Okay. So, you know, when we think about what we're going through now on a conscious level, globally. Mm -hmm. Right all of the suffering, all of the pain, and this, I mean, our world has been suffering and going through pain since it was created, right? Since mm -hmm. the earth was created, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we think of all of that, and then we think, okay, the one thing about what we've been experiencing is that everybody in the entire world has experienced it. So we can almost feel more empathy for them because we know what it's like. Mm -hmm. We felt oneness. Sometimes when there's tragedy, um, for example, you know, a particular country will get extremely patriotic or they'll rise mm -hmm. together and say, okay, let's put our differences aside. We're right. all one. Mm -hmm. That's on the 3D, the three dimensional level. Mm -hmm. But what is really happening is that we have all always been one. We have always been connected. That's mm -hmm. the collective consciousness, but we have our own individual soul blueprint. Did mm -hmm. I did I explain that okay? Yeah, I think so. Well, so then is it your blueprint that moves from, we'll just say body to body? <laughs> Correct. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You got it. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Well, okay. So I have uh, one last question, which I ask everybody. It won't sound as like uh, as much as like a, you know, left turn <laughs> in this conversation, but um, okay. So do you have any ghost or alien stories or anything unexplained <laughs> that that you would like to share or like from somebody else that you know that just sounds like a yeah a crazy ghost or alien story <laughs> so i have one ghost and one alien is that okay yes absolutely <laughs> okay cool so um a couple of years ago um my uncle uh, passed away mm -hmm. and i had heard about it um on on that day and um the next day i was just laying at home you know it was the weekend or whatever and i was laying uh laying on my couch and i'd fallen asleep and my husband had brought me a um a beautiful vase of red roses just mm -hmm. to say you know i'm sorry your uncle passed and mm -hmm. he was a lot of fun and and you know he he lived far away but whatever so the the vase of roses was on the dining room table and I was in the living room, but I, I could see the dining room table. So I woke up and I kind of, and I was literally, I'm telling you wide awake, I kind of propped myself up on my elbow and the vase of roses was on the coffee table in front of me. Hmm. And I went, what, what? And then I looked over to the dining room where they should have been and I saw my uncle and his the shadow of his body but it was very recognizable i saw him kind of walk out of the kitchen over to the dining room table and kind of look at me like this <laughs> and then disappear and then i looked up again i mean then i looked back at the coffee table again and the vase of roses was back on the dining room table Oh my gosh. I swear to you on stuck yeah, yeah. That's amazing. That it was there. So that was pretty cool. That that was yeah. a that was a spirit story. Um mm -hmm. and then in terms of uh alien, um, I actually channel a um galactic council of 12 higher beings mm -hmm. who are extraterrestrial. 
that's cool. How and do I've you? Got, I have, well, I have a whole, I mean, I've recorded all of them for years and I have um, nearly a book written of, of everything that they've, that they've shared. They did it. share a while back um, that there was going to be a lot of turmoil and um, uh, turmoil in the world and fighting. Um, it's so interesting because when they come through, they come through with different feelings and different mm -hmm. voices and different energies. Like there's, there's one and, and her name, she's told, she's told me her name is mother Mahaba and mm -hmm. she comes in and she talks to me in this very sweet little voice. And she calls me her little bird and <laughs> like, like, yeah. like I'm her baby. Right. Yeah. And then there's this other one who comes in and he's a warrior and he's like, you know, with this deep voice and, yeah. and he come, he says, just get to work. And, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, I know in my heart, without a doubt, there are so many beautiful, beautiful energies working with us, mm -hmm. all created by the divine. Um, all really just want us to be in that state of love. Mm -hmm. And I think it's all of our individual purposes beyond what our blueprints need. It's our purpose to really inspire that as much as we can. And I thank you for inspiring others to be elegant, <laughs> to um, pamper themselves, mm -hmm to be in relationship with not only themselves, but with others, to mm -hmm. just have a conversation. Right. Who does that anymore? Right, <laughs> I know. It's awesome. Awesome, well, thank you. Um, and do you, so when you talk with that, did you call them a panel? Is that what you call them? Council, uh, you're a council. council. Sorry, the council. So when you talk with the council, is that something that you can initiate or like they, or it just like happens to you? Like they just start talking to you. I have to um, sit with intention, okay, and go into meditation and ask for them, um, ask for them to speak with me, um, okay, and then, and then open up the channel. So right. that's how, as a as a medium and as a psychic, and then as a medium, mm -hmm. you get to learn how to do it with intention mm -hmm. to open up and ask. And um, once you do that. Mm -hmm they'll lots of lots of entities will come and visit you and bring you information but then you also have to teach them how to work with you because some people oh. will hear like this really loud buzzing or ringing in their ear mm -hmm. that's uncomfortable yeah and you have to talk with them and teach them you know give me another way to understand what you're saying tone it down because it's uncomfortable so mm -hmm. that's an example oh, wow that's yeah. really cool awesome <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being on my tea time. <laughs> this is You're really, welcome. really neat. And uh, can I, I show you really quickly two yes. tea pots? Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, show and tell is great. <laughs> this was my mother's. Look at this. Oh, the double tea. Oh my gosh. I love it. Yeah. That's adorable. That was, that was her double teapot. And then this is my favorite. And she sits in my blue room on top of my tea cabinet. Mm -hmm. The little cat. Oh my gosh. That's a amazing. Queen. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Then, like, let me, okay. So I'm going to show you, I have to grab it real quick, but I have a cat teapot. So this is great. Yay. Okay. So I found this one at like a random antique shop, but let's see. Hold <gasps> back here. But it's, um, oh yeah. So it's like oh, a little look. box of drawers and the cats are coming out. <laughs> So I was like, that's amazing. We both have fun cat teapots. <laughs> I had to show you. Doesn't surprise me at all. That's amazing. <laughs> well, thank you so much again for being on. And um, if you want to like throw your information, if people want to reach out to you, put it in the comments so that people can, I don't, I don't know if you prefer email, website, whatever. <laughs> but if you want to do that um, and yeah, just thank you so much. And I'm assuming I will see you around because we're oh, in the networking groups together. <laughs> and, and, and since we live so close to each other, one of these days we'll meet in person. And um, yes. so I promise a hug because I promise a hug to everybody. That's my thing. <laughs> All right. That's good. I, I like <laughs> hugs. 
Great. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you everyone you. for watching. This is the virtual tea time with Amy. Cheers. <laughs> Blessings. <laughs>